Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are y'all? <laughs> it's an off day, so it's probably going to be a little bit of an off show. That's okay. <laughs> We're a little bit off. Yeah. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. <laughs> I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less, and it is October. Oh, it's not October anymore. It's, it's November November 8th. the 8th. Because <laughs> Wheezy's birthday was yesterday, so happy old birthday, Wheezy. Old birthday. He doesn't even get a number. He <laughs> doesn't just even know old. old. 11 Now, you've probably pissed off some of our viewers who are like, hey now. <laughs> so, 54 would make him 56? 57. 57. Happy 57th birthday, Weezy. So, um, yeah, so we are late recording because we were at Graves this weekend with Wendy and LB. And then yesterday, neither one of us really just felt like recording. And I you can asleep. typically tell when one of us doesn't feel like recording, so we didn't want to, like, have a bummer show. So we're here and happy. <laughs> Laura has bummer. a high five shirt on. High five. <laughs> high five. High five. So, all right, so we'll start talking about what we're knitting. <laughs> um, I have two things in progress. And if I can find the other thing, that would be awesome. Although I'm not certain that's going to happen. Yeah, I can't find it. Let me just share them the pattern. Yep. So, Leslie has cast on these socks. It's the abalone. Or no, sorry. That's the sweater I'm knitting. This is the <laughs> Bavarian, Bavarian cable socks. Sorry. <laughs> not here today. Um, and this is for the Make-A-Wish recipient who won the socks. We've um, been going back and forth and figured out the right pattern, and I'm using Vulmaza Single Malt, which I have no idea where it is. It's not up here, so it must still be in my suitcase. I uh, started them on Sunday on a size one and a half US needle, and um, they were too loose, and I didn't have any other needles with me. So um, I only got like the toe and maybe an inch done. So as we were getting ready to record, I was frantically looking for my size ones. And I can't, and I have multiples, but I just can't find them, so I'll find them after. And you're going to magic loop those, correct? Yes, I'm going to magic loop them. And they're toe up, of course, because it's a Wendy Johnson. That's from toe, socks in a box. Yeah, toe up socks in a box or something like that. Because um, I brought it with me to Wendy so that I could get her to sign it. And then the other thing, um, when you last saw the abalone, it was about seven inches. and It's bottom up. It's bottom up. <laughs> Things you learn the hard way. And now it's mostly done. Um, so cool. it's, uh, taking is it about, is supposed to roll at the bottom? Well, no, no. Okay. What's going to happen is I've got the little bit, this is the next stitches on waist yarn and I picked up the ends of the sleeves and did the eight rows of seed, seed stitch and the applied eye cord edging, which was a lot I easier. I love applied eye cord edging. It's the first edging. one I've ever done it and it's a it's lot easier than I thought it would be. freaking awesome. So now my next step, uh, because it's curling, cause it's all stockinette is to pick up stitches along the whole thing, around the whole thing, and knit eight rows of um, C, C stitch, and then do an eye cord, cord edging. bind off. So cool. I'm, I'm going to start that while we're recording. I wanted to show y'all before it got too hung up in the needle. So I have tried it on, and it does, it is about that much too snug, which means it'll be fine when it blocks, because it grows um, a half inch for every four inches. So, or a quarter inch for every four inches, so that'll be fine. And if not, it's coming to live with me. <laughs> and so far it's taken a little over three skeins. I had to break into the fourth skein for the edging. Um, so I should be able to do the entire thing for four, from four skeins of the fingering weight. And that is an attempted Sly Girl in a Sweet Red. And you're holding it doubled. And I'm holding it doubled, yes. On what size needles? Um, a US 8. And that is 5.0 millimeters. I feel like I'm getting quizzed. You're like asking all the right questions. <laughs> I'm um, pretending like we do this on a weekly I basis. I know, right? We have a show. Uh, so that's that's what I'm working on. I'm pretty happy with this. is pretty much all I knit on while we were at Graves because it's very mindless. Didn't, I didn't have yep. to really think about it. So. And then you ran out of yarn. And then I ran out of yarn. I was very sad because I wanted to try to get it finished. But that's okay. I didn't think I would get through that much. And I got through quite a bit. So. And then you read your book. You should talk about your book and your favorite things. Um... Yeah, okay, I'll write that down. Or I want you to talk about what you're knitting. Sure, I'm knitting on a square. It is the Miter Crosses square. It is my seventh Miter Cross square. So that means that I have five more to do after this one. And I think there's around five weeks till Christmas, maybe six. So let's now, see. Now, if only you didn't have anything else to knit. 
Well, you know, they don't take very long, and this one's almost done. So there it is. It's getting one more side right there. I think they're on size six needles. I'll have to look in the show notes because I have... I'm so spoiled because the signatures have them right on there, but I'm using my Addies, which I love, but they don't have the size right on them, and it's... I use these so much, it's faded off the cable. But I believe it's a size six. Just a 16 inch, and... Noro, you're just about done with that, aren't you? Silk Garden. Yeah, I'm not finished. So you just have tonight. to pick up this along yeah, this edge. Yeah, just that edge, and eight ridges, and I'm done. Two, four, six. I have, I'm going to start the seventh ridge on this right now. It's no Karen's epic brown blanket, but it isn't mainly because like the reason why I will never do Karen's epic brown blanket <laughs> is it's it would kill me to carry that thing around. Yeah. It's not portable. Whereas this fits nicely in my piddly wedge. Alice in Wonderland. In fact, I have the pattern in there, folded in half. And actually, the pattern calls for 10 squares, and then you do that kind of layout with them. And if I run out of time, that might be what I'm doing. Yeah. But, um, and then you frame them. 12, right? But That's I'd rather do it, I have like threes. Mm -hmm. So it'd be three by four, and it's actually 13 and a half inches wide. So it'll be a blanket that's more like four by five. Kind of, sort of. A little bit less than that by the time it's done. And I have my Cascade 220 that I'm using for the frame. And Noro in the one colorway. And Noro in another colorway. Now, are you using all different colors of Noro for this? No. Well, I'm using all different colors of Noro for the inside squares and then all the outside little bits um, are the same. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably just use the Cascade 220 for that outside little bit too. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it through going into it. Oh, and one of my scores is upside down. <laughs> that is so not getting fixed. It's like your mutant eye. It's just, it's a little piece of you in the <laughs> It's like your socks from last week that Beck mentioned where both of the cables were on the wrong side. That's why that pattern hasn't come out, because I have to re -nip the socks. <laughs> That's awesome. I love I that you realized second. that on camera. Like, my face is all flushed now, because I'm so amused. <laughs> my face is flushed, too, because I'm embarrassed. I wonder how I did that. I love it. I was I knit on this during faculty meetings at school today, so. <laughs> I love it. I don't know what happened. Oh, well. That's what I get. <laughs> anyway, and then last but not least... Wheezy won't care, and it's for my father. <laughs> or he'll always stare at that one. Um, I started the Hollyberry stockings for my nieces. This is the start of the first one, and I've got to the point where I have to do... Um, you have to you chart, right? Yeah, I have to chart something, so I'm kind of dragging my feet on it. Um, so I did that snowflake chart that's right there. I'm actually on that white row right there, the second white row, and then I have um, two red rows, and then I have, instead of doing the date with the hearts, I'm going to chart out each of my niece's names, and I'm just going to chart it regularly, and then flip it upside down. Because um, it's so, knit from the top down. So yeah, it's knit from the top, the top down, so you have to flip it upside down. So, And I'm probably not even going to chart that heart, I'm just going to use the heart from this chart. And because their names are Julia and Alice, it's longer than what the date is by a letter. So I'm just going to count the number of squares that are here and center the name within those squares. At least they're both the same number of letters so that, that oh, yeah. template should be pretty transferable. Yeah, it should be okay. And I have a charting software, so it shouldn't be too bad to do. I'm trying to remember what size needles I'm knitting this on. I'm knitting this out of the ever lovely um, on size six. Apparently, that's the everything is six. It's a roll. Oh, that's four millimeters, and um, you're supposed to actually start on smaller needles. I didn't do that <laughs> because it's just for this garter edge. So it's a provisional cast on because there's going to be an applied acorn that goes here with a loop. So I did the Judy's Magic cast on. Um, Judy's Magic Cast On, Provisional Cast On, which I really liked, and just knit on those sixes. And what I did was I did it on my long signatures so that I could hold them like parallel. 
and do the magic cast on and just and then just put half the stitches on another the waist yarn and then I switched over to the 16 inch. It's basically like knitting a big sock mm -hmm. on 16 inch needles, which I love. Um, I'm using Vanna's Choice and Wool Ease and the Greens Wool Ease as well. I really like the feel of Is the Wool Ease. Is washable? Mm hmm Okay. Versus the Vanna's Choice. I actually prefer the Vanna's Choice. Really? Yeah. I don't know. But there wasn't a white Wool Ease. I like to keep things the same when I do them, but there, that so, wasn't yeah, the an option. The white's the same. That's going to yep. be fun. Plus, it'll be nice that they're you can throw them in the washing machine and not yeah. have to worry. And I'm... Debating over lining it or not. I'm going with no right now because mom would have to line it. I was going to say because your mom's going to be out of town. Yep, she's going to be with my um, sister in law and nieces mm -hmm. when my second niece is born. The day after Thanksgiving is when the C section is scheduled. Wow. So that is it. Oh no, socks. So on the plane, I finished the first sock and I actually wove in the ends but I didn't cut them because I thought people might get concerned if I was cutting if I had scissors out on the plane. They let you have up to I four know, inches, but right? People are weird. It's kinda like the guy who sat next to me who asked me if I knit all my clothing. <laughs> yeah, like I'm she's sitting wearing there in jeans, jeans and a sweatshirt. <laughs> that says York College across it. I need to cut that. Anyway, um just shove it in there. So, be cooperative. I thought that Vesper only had 20 sock, uh, stripes in the sock. I don't know where I got that from. My crazy head. My crazy sleep deprived head. So, I used 10 stripes on this first sock. And this is the Hocus Pocus colorway of Vesper. I knit it on size one and a half needles. And... That's about it. They're going to need little short socks, and I'm okay for that, because Halloween typically down here is... So how far are you on the second one? Oh. Um, so Halloween is typically warm. So that's the first one. Afterthought heel. I'm rambly today. And then the second one is... And this is the color of Leslie's single malt. <laughs> it's that waist yarn. Yeah. That looks like that, because I stole some of it from my waist yarn. Um, and I am a little bit past the heel. And this will become my purse project um, for this week. And then I will hopefully finish it. That's mostly what you knit on the plane, right? Yes, because it's small and portable. And um, people don't, like, people, I find if you have bigger projects, kind of give you the evil eye. See, I don't even like to knit on planes unless I'm... Like, unless I'm sitting beside somebody I know. Because I feel like if, I, if I'm if i knitting and I pull my needle and it, I accidentally elbow Laura, <laughs> it's not the end of the world. But if I'm, you know, somebody I don't know, I'll just read. And that's all Laura and I wanted to do on the way back was just read. It was read because I was reading the new Aline Wilkes book. But um, because you cannot have electronic devices, this is, I think this is stupid. Because you can, and I'm sure there's a safety reason I'm for sure it, there but is. It, it's still, I want to be able to read my Kindle the whole time I'm on the plane. I just figured there'd be a way for them to, like, block any signals that would interfere. Well, it's not, I don't have it, I don't have any, um... You don't have a 3G on it? I, no, I don't have 3G, I have the... Wi-Fi? Wi, wait, what do I have? No, I have 3G, yeah. I don't have Wi-Fi, but I have it turned off all the time because it wastes it, too much it battery. It, yeah. So... I don't know. I understand safety reasons, but I would like to be able to read the whole time on the plane. So what I do is I pull out the socks, work on them until we get to 10,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Might have memorized that number. <laughs> and then I pull out my Kindle and read. And sometimes I read and knit. I did not do that this trip because no. the muggles were looking at me crazy to begin with. But that's it for me and what's on my needles. But you're Actively wearing a beautiful working. finished on. I do have an FO. You and Wendy were racing. Yes, I race. I hope I fin. Um, we were. Wendy didn't know it. <laughs> but once she did, man, she kicked mm -hmm. in the high gear. She kicked in the gear. I finished, I cast on Thursday night when we were at the hotel room, a trillion, and I finished it. Can you find my boo-boo for me? Oh, probably, if I'm looking on the right. So right here. Okay. Um, and so I finished it on... Sunday, around an hour and a half after when you finished hers, 
and I did a pro row. I pro back by mistake, uh -huh. but I really have to stare to find it, so I'm not that worried about it when it's wrapped around my neck. Love this pattern. I use size four needles, which is, the pattern calls for size three, and, and it's Trillion by Martina Baum, right? Uh huh. And I also used Volmaza and the Lavendel colorway. I had a cell. I had this already wound up. And I will do this pattern again. I might cast it on this weekend because I want to have it out of a variegated. It works well with like a plain t-shirt to wear to work, to dress up a plain t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So I will probably, and I've been wearing it kind of like this. Today is actually, over here is the first place I've worn it. Also, I didn't have blocking wires. I couldn't find them. It got moved. So I don't have an awesomely straight edge, but I really like how it turned out. I like Martina Bem's patterns. I do too. She did um, Hitchhiker and Hitchhiker. The new Trillion. one that, call, that calls for like a whole skein of lace weight. I love that. I'm going to have to buy that one. Um, it's crazy. That one's Portuguese for pearl. The name of that. The fact that I remember that is crazy. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And um, what's the one that you did by her? Uh, Magrathia. Magrathia. She's got four in the Hitchhiker series, I think. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And she's got 28, I think. And some other ones. She's got a super cool little girl's dress. But it's feral out of two skeins of Volmaza. <laughs> and that would take a very long time. Well. To knit a, a child's dress. You have to really love yarn. that child. I don't think it's a matter of love. I think it's a matter of time versus product produced ratio. <laughs> okay. Well, my only FO y'all have kind of seen, but I, it's really, really an FO now. So I'm going to show it to you again. <laughs> so I took the sweater, um, the Elizabeth Zimmerman sweater, with me to Graves because I wanted Wendy to help me do the surgery on the sleeves. Which and you wore it while totally we were there. happens. It was yeah, let me Quite cool. button a couple of buttons on this thing real quick to keep it so I can show y'all. So, the only thing I had left to do was to sew on the buttons, we'll weave in all the ends, and um, perform the sweater surgery, the sleeve surgery, which I did. So this is what it looks like now. It is still, <laughs> I buttoned it wrong. <laughs> Look at that. I buttoned it wrong. I am short bus special today. You should explain the button situation in the car ride to Little Rock. So, on the car ride to Little Rock, I decided I would try to sew on buttons. Go ahead and get that out of the way because it was about two hour drive and Laura was driving. So, um, I had already sewed on the grosgrain ribbon on the back, which made the, the side with the buttons on it not stretchy, which is what you want for a button band. Um, but this, the side where the button holes were was still quite stretchy. I didn't take that into account. <laughs> so the bottom two buttons lined up great, and then they didn't. And then they didn't even more, and then they got worse and worse. So I had to take off the top five buttons that I had sewn on, and then wait and wait till I was on a flat surface where I could mark each spot and all that. So I failed the first go-around. But that's okay. I think I failed the first go-around on every step of the sweater so far. So that's all right. And then when we got to Graves, um, it was Saturday morning, I think, that we decided to go ahead and do the sweater surgery. We went to the library. Yeah, we went to the little library that they had there at Graves. And um, with an audience and a video camera. <laughs> and um, I was filming, so y'all you know, you know it's horrible. So I did um, about an inch down from the color work. I snipped it. Well, I had put in waste yarn where I wanted to join them, which was about 23 rows. Um, so I put it in waist yarn on both the bottom and the top. I snipped it, I unraveled it, and then I grafted them back together. It took about an hour and a half per sleeve to kind of make sure it was done right. Um, I think that it's done really well and you can't even see it, honestly, because it was about right there. But you I haven't blocked, I haven't yet, blocked it yet. So what, what little bit you can tell, you won't be able to tell once it's blocked. My only complaint so far, <laughs> funny, that's only complaint, is the yarn is pilling quite a bit, um, especially under the arms. I have tons of sweaters that do that though. Um, let's see if I can find it. So like right here is under the arm on the left side and it's it's pilling quite a bit, which isn't a huge deal because I do have a sweater shaver 
Um, I think I got it from Knit Picks that I can go and get the fuzz off. And I expect it to peel the first few times that I wear it and get off all the top layer of everything. But it is kind of peeling, which is sort of annoying. But that's okay. I'll get it fixed. And um, I'll probably throw it in the bath tub tonight and let it soak. And then it's going to yeah. take a couple days to dry because it's huge and thick. Put some fans on that sucker. Yeah, I don't have a sweater dryer like Laura. I do have a sweater dryer and it is awesome. So, you have some spinning. I do. So, I had s grabbed the um, Dive Dying Arts Goblin Elbows colorway to spin up to use, to ply with the Numa Numa to use for my bind off for Shayla. Right. Mm -hmm. So I finished spinning all of that. I didn't realize it was called Goblin Elbows. It's not awesome. That's She's got fine. some great names. I have. Her, I had her Cheshire Cat and some other ones, but I have not soaked it or thwacked it sitting on my desk, so it might be a little bit crazy. But um, it came out like this. It's a tiny bit overspun. I think it'll come out with a thwapping. Um, it's around 250 yards, I believe. Now I can't even remember, and I didn't write it down. Because I'm a poor podcaster. And, um... You're terrible. I'm kicking you out. Awesome. And, um, There's a lot of remorse there. <laughs> so, I think it came out alright. I yeah. think it'll be fun. I will... It's more like a sport weight. It's a little bit thicker in some places. Really, I spun it super fast just to get that this single sun so I could finish Shaylin. So it's pretty and I cannot wait to use it. I might use it in the um, the Coastal Knits book that we reviewed a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They have that feather and fan shawl that uses some other colored edging and I think that would be super pretty with this and then a darker color for the feather and fan. Mm -hmm. So it's got short rows in it, so I'll just I'll have to wash this and see how it plumps up and see what's going on. I also started spinning the center pole bat, but that's all kind of connected and I didn't want to separate it to bring over here. It has a whole bunch of fibers in it. It's by loop and it has some kind of metal fiber in it. I'm trying to remember. It's not silver. Is it Angelino? No, it's actual metal. Oh. It's not copper. It's, I don't know, I'll have to look it up and put it in the show notes. But it's kind of, I had it all over my jeans earlier. My jeans were silver. It's something <laughs> that's silver, but I don't think it's actual silver. Um, but it's sh very, very short staple, so I'm kind of having to take it slow. And it's coming out really, really pretty, though. I just have to take it one step at a time. And that was the Tweedledum bat by Loop that Karen from Around the Twist... Yep. Brought me back from Rhinebeck, so I'm enjoying spinning it. I actually did join her club. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and confess that now. So I joined her three-month club. She still had uh, spots in her bullseye club up. And I'm looking forward to getting my next three months of fiber. It is a, a little bit pricey, but I'm interested to see what happens. And I think Diane from Knittables also joined it. Yeah, I think she did So it'll too. be fun. And everyone gets a different bat, and it's all custom made, which is that's cool. probably why it's more expensive, but that's really, really awesome. So I got to say, no, I hate those colors. <laughs> and it was hard to pick out the colors I hate, because there's so many of <laughs> them. You could only pick one, so I had to rate like my colors on colors that I hate the most. So what color did you hate the most? Fawn. Like a light brown. Hmm. I don't like light brown. I don't like yellow or orange or salmon today. <laughs> or and then you finished the tree hugger mm -hmm. and that was a gift for Wendy. Yep. We finished the tree hugger. I spun a little over half the singles and lastly spun the rest and you have my bobbins over here. I saw them over there. They say, mommy, I want to come home with Laura. I don't live here. Oh, oh yeah. Right there. Stranger danger. I was like, where do you see them? Um, well, when I was spinning the loop bat earlier, I was like, why do I only have three bobbins? Only three. Only three. And then I forgot that you had two over here. I like so. to slowly steal things. <laughs> uh, so I didn't spin on the wheel any this week, but I did take my spindle from Deerfield Creations. 
and some fiber. <laughs> I love the fiber that's just popping out. That's um, gorgeous. I didn't spend a ton, but this is CJ Kopeck, and it was an alpaca merino silk blend, and it didn't have a number or a name on it, so sorry. Um, and I spun it on my Tibetan support spindle. <sighs> I'm supposed to buy that off that route. And I'm still not great with this. But it is easier to spin with better fiber. <laughs> so it's probably a fingering weight single, maybe a little bit heavier than that even. So it's not great, but I did get some practice in, which is great. Great, great, great is today's word. So that was nice, and I... I you should say it like Tony the Tiger. Great. <laughs> uh, anyway. So I spun a little bit. I might spend some more on the spindle this week when I have cool. some downtime. But I, I am enjoying it still quite a bit, and I do think she makes some beautiful wooden pieces. And she I have being a wee Lori. little bag. Yeah, Lori from Deerfield Creations. You can find her on Etsy. And, uh, <laughs> or if I do show notes this week, you can find her in that. We had stuff to do last week. We were out of town starting on Wednesday. And we had to pack, and I had classes and such. Excuses, yeah. excuses, excuses. Anyway. Looking forward to a couple weeks with no travel. Yes, our next travel is Arkansas Fiber Arts Extravaganza. I'm super excited about that. Guess what? They just announced they're having a rivalry party on Saturday night. I know. It makes me super happy. It's one stitch short. Is coming. For, she's a uh, God. What's her real name? The hostess with the mostess is what it's. Yeah, about. she just had a baby, and I can't remember her name for the life of me. But anyway, she's going to be there on Saturday night, so that's going to be awesome. That's going to be super cool. Um, It'll be my first ravelry party. Yeah, well, well, it's going to be my second ravelry party, but it'll be your first ravelry <laughs> party. It'll be our first ravelry par party as podcasters. Woo um. So that's going to be fun. All my classes are sold out, but they announced in that group as well that they are not issuing a refund on any classes. It's kind of like, but you can transfer them to other people. So if you find So somebody. if you're interested in taking a class, anyone's class, you might want to kind of check out the Arkansas Fiber Arts Extravaganza board and kind of see, I would just post a in search of, mm -hmm. um... Because it looks like some people are backing out, and I think they would rather have you PayPal the money versus lose all that money. Right. Which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. Um, but we're super excited to be going there. Yep. It's our third year. It's the fourth year for the event. Event, but, but the first year, year it only had, I think, under 100 people. Mm -hmm. So we've been going since it got awesome. And we hadn't heard about it at that point either, so. But it's lots of fun, and there's lots of great people, and it's going to be wonderful. And we have a book review of a book that we, we just got. Um, it was waiting for me when we got back from D.C. So it's from Sixth and Spring, um, and they sent us this book for review, and it's 60 more quick knits, and this time it's using Cascade Sport Weight. It's uh, their 220, 220 sport, sport which just is a you more, to? you can talk about it and I'll add in my two cents okay. for what it's worth. So, I actually found quite a lot of things in this book that I liked. Hence all the red tabs. Yep. Um, it retails for $17.95. I'm sure that you can find it less expensively on Amazon, uh, or you will be able to shortly. And um, you can also find it at your local yarn shop, because mm -hmm. our local yarn shop has it. I Anyone remember them having the first one. I hadn't Cascade seen this one there, but. Yep. Uh, okay. So... Some things were really cute, and some things were just so funny we had to share. <laughs> so we're not going to show you every pattern, of course, but this... Because there are 60 of them. Mm -hmm. And I would say probably a third or more are things I would likely knit if I had unlimited amounts of time. Now, everything in here does use the Cascade 220 Sport. Sport weight. You could Sometimes it uses favorite. it doubled, but it does use that yarn. So the, these are the Baltic Mittens. And it's a nice color work pattern that also introduces you into corrugated ribbing and the Latvian braid, which is a pretty cool um, to get thrown into it in one project. Um, there's not a lot of really detailed instructions in here, but a lot of that stuff you can find otherwise on Nitty or YouTube or what have you. There are lots of charts. <laughs> Most of the patterns, especially the color work patterns, are charts only. Right, so if you are a written directions only kind of person, then this may not be the book for you. 
Uh, this one was kind of cute. Laura liked it without the with the absence of the little flower. There's a lot of Ex flipperty embellishments gibbets. on this, and so it's got texture, some cables, some seed stitch, and then it's got a little I cord flower that's added on there. I like it without the flower. Um, these Laura and I both like. I like those. They're called the wave cuff mittens, and they're a good sort of everyday mitten like you don't have to worry about messing these mittens up because they're just they they did it doesn't look like they take very long to knit plus they're nice and simple and you can shove them in your coat pocket and not worry about them. i think this would be fun in like a monochromatic colorway mm -hmm. like dark blue with like one shade lighter blue mm -hmm. something like that and then another fair owl mitten pattern that we both I liked like those just because they're like gray red and white together yeah and actually it's a very classic winter pattern. It would be also pretty if you exchanged the red for a blue. And a blue kick. Today. Laura really likes this one, but she thinks it's cruel <laughs> that the bird is in a cage. <laughs> it is. It's kind of mean. That uses intarsia, but also for the beak and the feet, it uses, um, looks like dupe stitch. Yeah. Some kind of embroidery type. Yeah, it is a dupe stitch because it shows how to do the whip stitch. Okay. Um, I kind of thought this was a cute idea, this color block cap. This is the view from the top. Uh, it uses it's an introduction to short rows, and then this is the view from. I don't like the side. that at all. It does use one skein throughout the whole hat, and then you add you blend a second colors. skein, and that one uses two skeins held like one skein two of each, strands so it's held two double. strands, so it's held doubled. There's a lot of basket weave, a lot of bobbles, a lot of pom poms. Um, Laura and I both liked this as well. Yes, I would actually do that with the pom pom. And it's got the reverse stockinette here right at the ridges where it changes, which is a nice little detail, a nice little accent. <laughs> I love this. I do too. It's kind of got an optical illusion look to it, um, or wood grain kind of look to it. And it's called the embroidered mushroom cap, but I probably wouldn't do the mushrooms. And Laura had a good idea of using two different tones of blue, and instead of embroidering the mushrooms, embroidering stars little stars on so it. so like stars which i think would be cute it would look like a galaxy instead of mm -hmm. um wood this is the double knit checkerboard scarf which i thought would be a good introduction to double knit because it is you're knitting both sides at the same time and it's reversible uh, and I, i've knit double knit before and it's not it's not my favorite thing to do but it is a kind of a cool deviation when you want something more interesting Totally knitting this for Laura for Christmas. <laughs> it's the puppy hat. Let me explain to them my <laughs> thought process when I saw this hat. So one of my biggest fears in life See, that's is... what it looks like from the front when you're just looking at her. But from the back... <laughs> so I don't know why this freaks me out, but it's my kids always show me the Ripley's Believe It or Not books. And the people who had a twin but absorbed it and have like an extra arm and stuff that reminds me of like they have an extra puppy head like they absorbed a puppy coming out of the back of their skull and it just freaks uh, me out i can see the hate mail already um these i thought were a cute idea for like teen or preteen. um it's there for the convertible mitten gloves and it stripes the colors stripe in the cuff and then you use the those colors for the individual fingers and, and then, I think you could change this a little bit and make it more adult by just changing the color palette. Yeah, and it's a good basic flip top mitten pattern too because it, it does have the little flip tops in there. And you could do it all in a solid color if you wanted it to be more neutral. So there's lots more stuff. Again, we only showed y'all probably a dozen out of the 60 that are in here. So for the price, you're getting 60 patterns for 18, or bucks. 18 bucks. So you really are getting a lot of bang for your buck. And if you're like me and have put off all holiday knitting and haven't <laughs> even started holiday knitting, then you can use, because it's sport weight, so it's mm -hmm. not worsted, but it's sport weight, which will go faster than fingering. You can whip out a ton of good stuff. Make the creepy puppy hat. Um, this is supposed to be released in November. It may already be released. It doesn't have a date on here. I've seen it at Yarn Shop. Okay, so, so then it's already it's out. out. So, um, Go pick it up and thumb through it and see what you think. I, I, I would buy this book even if they hadn't sent it to us because I, I like this quite a bit. I like the first one quite a bit. And we're not giving this away. so Because <laughs> I like it and it is useful. And it is warm. Um, I'm comfortable. Which means it's warm. <laughs> uh, my shirt Laura got me. Warning. 
Red shirts may be hazardous to your health. They might be. It's a Star Trek reference for those of you who aren't Trekkies. Um, all right. Favorite things. We got to meet some awesome people at Fiber Space Meetup. Thank you so much to the Fiber Space people for letting mm -hmm. us come hang out. We were on their little chalkboard. I know, I took pictures. <laughs> and uh, it was super cool. They were super cool. I found out that, that the owner of Fiber Space's parents actually live not but five minutes from where mm -hmm. I grew up in Pittsburgh. So um, Lisa, Fiber Nymph, brought me Sarah's pretzels. Yes. And I had them. And the owner of Fiber Space was like, are those Sarah's pretzels? <laughs> so they are everywhere and they are yummy and delicious and the best thing on earth besides actually visiting them and their ice cream shop. But um, if you live anywhere near DC and you haven't been to that shop, you should definitely make a pilgrimage. Cause and they have Tannis Gray coming. I think it's this I weekend. I think it's this weekend as well to um, launch her new book. So they always have something going on. It's a fabulous shop. And let's just go ahead and talk about who we met and what we got. So we met a lot of folks. So if we don't remember your name, please forgive us because we did meet a lot of folks. But CC Carey was there with her uh -huh. sister, and we got to meet Aris Nitz. Um, Space Junk came in all of her tall, oh, thin gloriousness. So what I wouldn't give to look like her. Um, um, the lady in the purple who was super Linda, sweet. I've forgotten your rivalry name. Uh, and there were some others as well. Of course, Fiber Nymph came and Wendy was there. And Beck came down, yeah. so that was great. Beck and Matt came. Um, They're just some wonderful I'm drawing people. a blank. There, there were more. There, there was the lady who brought me treats for Neelix, and I can't remember her name either. Because I have no brain. Because we're <laughs> off. It's a different night. But anyway, we got some great stuff. And they carried Loft. They the did. The new Jared Flood yarn. And I got some, not for me, but as a gift for someone else. And I've already sent her pictures, so. Um, and she wanted fawn colors. So I got her. <laughs> the color the color which that I you like. Um, so I got her two different ones. And it's actually a really cool process. Like, there's 30-something colors in the, the whole yarn. or that's There's 30-something colors of Loft. Mm -hmm. and, and you can, they reverse the ply. So these actually use the two same mm -hmm. colors. This is the light with the dark, and this is the dark with the light. And that is nest and wood smoke. Wood so smoke. there's only 11 individual colors, but the way they blend them gives them the 32 or however many there are. And if you want an awesome review on um, Loft. Loft, Clara Parks did one in Knitter's Review yep. and talks about how it's woolen spun and all the little nitty-gritty what, nitty -gritty for details. And what, it, what you probably shouldn't use it for. Um, I think mine are going to be color work. So I got, let's see. Excuse the crunching of the bags. I got these two, which are tent. And I love that colorway. And thistle. And basically, this is the little sister of shelter. Jared Flood's shelter. So the colorways are the same. And then I also got more purple. Plume and blanket fort. How can you resist the name blanket fort? So that's these are all gonna be color work of some kind. I talked Wendy into getting enough for a gradient shawl. Mm -hmm. It is American wool, so if you're looking to support wool that is grown in Wyoming and spun in New England. This would be an awesome choice. It's fingering weight and retails at Fiber Space for fourteen fifty. They do do online orders. She got four bags of each color, so. And they did a really cool display of it as they well. They did. They put in like little baskets. It was very cute. So that's what I got from. That's the first thing that I got from Fiber Space. What else did you get from Fiber? I didn't purchase anything else from the store itself. I did meet up with Lisa Fiber Nymph who when she did her um, update of the Nian Cat yarn last week, I was there, mouse clicker finger ready, and got myself some Nian Cat sock yarn, which is so happy and awesome. It makes me very, very happy. So there's um, 438 yards of the main stripe, and then there's 219 yards of the contrasting toe and heel yarn, and it makes me so happy. I made her promise to bring some to SSK. Um, she's, I think she's only doing like four orders at a time and it is a little bit more expensive. It's 40 bucks, but you are getting 600 plus yards of yarn. So really when you think about it, it's not that much more expensive. It is on a sparkle base 
and the process for dyeing this takes her an ungodly amount of time. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to knitting this stuff up. It, I wish I didn't have Christmas on the horizon because I would cast it on immediately, but it makes me really happy. How many things are you knitting for Christmas? Have you, you I haven't really decided. I, I'm going to do a lot of sewing instead of knitting. so Because it goes faster. Yeah. And then the other thing that I got from Fiber Space was, I guess it's Viola? Viola? Viola. And I like the fact that she uses a stamp for both that side and this side, and it's merino fingering weight, um, 400 yards, hand dyed in Canada. This is the Dewdrop colorway, which I just thought was absolutely breathtaking. It's very pretty. She had some other colorways, but this is going to become a shawl of some kind. I might have to design something especially for this yarn because it is. How many yards is it? Gorgeous. 400. So, Charlotte, but I love that just dark blue that just pops right there. So, because I spent lots of money at Fiber Space between the la in the past year and a half, I had enough to fill up my first card, and that so got a me shoppers card. a free t-shirt. So I have that as well. I'll have to wear that in an upcoming podcast. It's long sleeve and dark green and really, really cool. You wore it on so, the way home, right? I did, which is why it's in dirty laundry yeah. and not clean laundry. My laundry is in the washing machine now. Um, we got some more stuff, not from Fiber Space, but from other places that we visited. So after Fiber Space, we dyed my hair and your hair. Mm -hmm. Although you really can't tell, mine's just a darker brown. <laughs> but Laura's, I think that she was wearing it up um, the day after, and she just had the one little strand hanging down. And I was like, oh, you look so much like Claire Danes in the My Soul Called <laughs> Life, because she always did that. Um, so I think it looks cute. I, I think it's cute. The sixth graders approve. Good. Ninety percent of the sixth graders approve. The other ten percent were like, "I hate your hair." <laughs> Did you do something in your Thanks. hair? Because I hate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tact. Three, three out of four sixth graders approve of the hair, um, and they will let that very much known. Uh, so Friday morning we got up early, and uh huh, and we went by um, a little oddities shop and got a couple of little things and then we went by the knitwits we had delicious lunch mm -hmm. and we went by a store the knitwits in sperryville and i got from there what did i get from there where is it oh it's still in the bag i didn't realize this bag couldn't worn it that kind of makes me feel even more hard hardcore i got rock creek yarn twisterino 100 percent superwash wool oh, that 400 yards and it is it was $22 and it is in the greedy elves's colorway <laughs> my precious marketing it's all about the marketing it is and it's dark gray with just pops of yellow totally not a color that I would usually gravitate to but it was it's very called greedy pretty. elves's <laughs> it's called greedy elves's and then I also um that was it for me there. What did you get from there? I um, didn't get any yarn. I got a couple of little gift items, little motion gift items that I'm not going to show y'all. But um, she had locally um, processed cashmere. Locally grown and processed. And from Madison County. Yeah. Virginia. And she actually had on here, oh here it is, you can make a felted scarf with cashmere. With I was cashmere like, no, movie. no. Um, so it was 20 bucks per half ounce, which I don't know if that's good or not, but I felt like I was supporting a local U.S. Her company. Her store so. in general, um, was a lot of fair trade yes. and a lot of pretty. And it is so nice and it feels great and it's nice and clean and I'm going to save it to a point where I feel like out of this ounce, I can get enough to make myself maybe a smoke ring cowl or something like that. Um, I don't have delusions of 600 yards or anything, but uh, I'm really happy with this purchase of the cashmere, so. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'll make with it, but I like it. It's pretty. And then we went to the little oddity store mm -hmm. and had a wonderful time. I walked around with Wendy and got some tea berry gum, and you got some little odd things. You got cheer wine, which I, you had never I've tasted never before. I've never heard of cheer wine. It's a soda, I guess, that's 
I don't know if it's local to that area or if it's just more of a northern it's, thing or it's just an old fashioned bottled soda. So and that was okay. And uh then we, we went to Graves. And, and set around a knit, checked in, met up with LB and Rose, which was wonderful. Yes, she brought her puppy who was super sweet. She's super sweet. And Rose was very nice and we brought Rose and Wendy little gifts and then LB brought us a ridiculous gift bag full of stuff. And she loves her some sunshine yarn, so she shared the love. This is my first skein of sunshine yarns. And it's a single ply merino, and it's 440 yards, and mine is called Geode. Mine's called Glacier. And she had so many other goodies. Mm -hmm. There was chocolate, there was ginger candy. Or Virginia's for lover's mug. Yes, I love that. A uh, cute little magnet, just very, and mm -hmm. Hank actually just started carrying that whole lot. Oh, really? The magnets are. And just adorable, cute things. Yeah, so she got us some really so cute So she's stuff. super sweet. And then she had all these Hexapuff skeins and made us each pick out a skein. And I got the, it's from Kama Sutra. With two com. And I got that pretty pot of gold. I'm going to show you. So it's 200 yards. So I, it's actually a half skein. So I might use it with black or something else and stripe it to do something fun. And she, I got a couple of little red bicycle mini skeins that were really cute, but I didn't bring them up. They're still in my suitcase, I think. Um, and then Saturday, we went to Kid Hollow Farm. And it's kidhollow.com. And it's Pat Harder, mm -hmm. the owner. And she is super sweet. I think I remember her from, I'm pretty sure she's a regular at Maryland Sheep and Wool in Rombeck. And um, she had some lovely roving. So I got, I got four ounces of this, which is, a, I think it's a blue face luster, a black face luster. It's some kind of wool and mohair blend. I got the same blend in a dusty moss, which is sort of a green and grays, and there's some hidden pinks in there. So I, got I four cannot ounces wait to spin this up. And, and then, it was very reasonably priced as oh, well. Oh, yes. And then I also got a skein of her... Silken Kid Yarn in Plums. It's 2.2 ounces, 165 yards. And it is 40% Kid Mohair, 40% Silk, 20% Wool. And there's her business card. Very, very nice lady. She had a border collie that chases and barks at shadows, Annie. which was <laughs> super funny. And just a very, very, very nice person. She has Angora Goats. Just really, really sweet. So It was nice to visit her. I don't know if she's got stuff for sale on her shop or not, but you can go to kidhollow.com and probably contact her that way yep. if you're interested in that types of blends. Um, so anyway, we had a great time at Graves Mountain. It was nice to just kind of sit back and relax, and uh, we met a couple of really nice people there as well. So Julie and Lucy. And their apples abound. <laughs> there were lots Graves of Mountain. apples. It made they me want delicious. to make some apple cake, because we had some apple cake there that was really oh, good. The apple pie was delicious. So, okay, I think we're at like 50 minutes now, so we should probably hurry it up. But... Our friend Ro in Georgia um, is getting rid of a bunch of her fiber, so she's doing a giveaway, and you don't have to do anything except go into an, the SSK group and in the Knit Girls group. There's a thread that's called Fiber Giveaway or something to that effect, and the first post tells you how to enter, and she's giving away like two pounds of fiber to one person um, in each group, and I think you have to enter by this coming Sunday, the 13th, and then she's just going to do a random number generator to win. Yep. So... Go on her. Yep. Tons of good stuff. If you're interested in roving, go, go, go. Um, let's see. Let's see. Your book that you read. Do you want yes. to talk about that now? So we were both reading um, most of the trip <laughs> whenever we had downtime when we were in our room trying to go to sleep or work, whatever. Um, which, by the way, I found this creepy crawly thing in my bed Saturday <laughs> night, and I explained it to her, like, I described it to Michael, and he's like, oh yeah, that's a house centipede. And I'm like, oh my god, it's centipede. <laughs> and it was, like, that big, and I, we don't have those here. But, anyway. <laughs> if we do, they don't make it into houses. <laughs> I killed it and flushed it. But, anyhow, um, off topic already. So, before I left, I asked people to recommend books because I like to take a book with me on the Kindle when I travel, something new. And I had just finished the Hunger Games series. And somebody, I can't remember who it is now already, um, Angela something or 
Anyway, somebody recommended a book called Ready Player One, which is by Ernest Klein, and it's his first book. Um, and it's about a future where people kind of interact in this virtual reality. Now, I'm not going to describe it to you really too much, but it's a really, really good book, and it has a lot of 80s pop culture and video game references. So if you are into that kind of thing, it's sort of science fiction, but not very... It's dystopia, because... Yeah, there you go. Dystopia. There you go. Really good book. I read it in about four days, and I wish he'd written anything else because I would have bought it sight unseen. And then I started a new book called Postmortem and finished it today at lunch, um, which is the most I've probably read in that short of a time in years and years. But I wanted to talk about something cool that I just realized today for people who are Amazon Prime members, which is like $79 a year, um, and it allows you to get anything that Amazon sells most things that Amazon sells, um, free two-day shipping, and then they added free stuff you can watch online, like videos and movies and stuff. And then a new thing that they just added is the Kindle Lending Library, which you can you can only access it from your Kindle devices. So if you read, um, if you use like a, an app on your iPhone or iPad or uh, on your PC, you can't access it from there. It has to be a Kindle device. You can pick from like over a thousand books and borrow them straight from Amazon for free for nothing. Really? It's really cool. I went and borrowed one today. Um, I can't remember where it was. But anyway, if you're an Amazon Prime user, you, you can go to the Kindle store and then there's an option where you can shop the Kindle lending library and you can pick any book and borrow it. Like the whole um, the whole Hunger Games series is in there. <laughs> oh, really? So, and no. then there's a bunch of Christopher Oops. Moores and other stuff. So, go check it that's out if you're cool. a Prime member, because that's really cool. What book were you reading? I read two books. Three books now. I read a Chicagoland Vampires book. I think it was the fourth in that series. It was pretty good. I was worried about the series because they killed off one of the major characters in the last book, and I was wondering how that was going to play out. I read a new steampunk book by Mel Jean book, Brooke, which was Iron Heart, I believe. It's the second in that series, although she's done a couple short stories. Pretty good. And I also read the new Elan, is it, um, Wilkes book, W-I-L-K-S, which is a werewolf, um, paranormal fantasy. Kind of dystopia book. You're all about the paranormal lately. I'm all about the paranormal all the time. I just tend to not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I put you on the spot. No, that's okay. Look, I'm still picking up stitches. <laughs> I'm going to add those books to Goodreads. I'm trying to get back into using Goodreads. So I'll try to put those up there this week sometime. Um, I think that that's it. Do you have anything else to talk I'm trying to look and see if we've forgotten anything. But I don't think that I've forgotten anything. Have you talked about all your stuff? I've talked about everything that I have. Cool. Well, that means that it's it. <laughs> um, we're back to our regular recording schedule for a few weeks. And then in December, stuff will change. And once we have that figured out, we'll pass it on to you. Um, that's it. There might be a lot of special editions in December. Because we're both going to be on vacation for extended periods of time. Yeah. And our vacations are not at the same time. No. They do not overlap. But I have to go see my new niece. And I'm taking a family vacation. Yeah. Which is long overdue. It's going to be Kobe's first time on a plane, so that'll be fun. That'll be super fun. So we'll get that, and we'll get some footage from Graves probably up sometime soon. Next couple weeks. We'll see. <laughs> when I have time. <laughs> um, so that's it, and we'll catch you guys again next week. Until then, have a great week. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.